Welcome to this lesson on working the room, also known as the beginner's guide to getting off of your yoga mat for teaching yoga. Some of us feel stuck to our yoga mat, constantly doing demonstration. And if you're used to teaching online classes, that might be your go-to method. Demonstrate the entire class so people can see what's going on. But as a studio instructor, it's important to be able to observe your class and give them the most that you can to help them through the process. So some people can't see the front of the room if they're in specific poses or uh, it's very difficult to see a demonstration or simply it just gives another layer of depth and magic to your classes. So there's a lot of great reasons why getting off of your mat and observing or talking through verbally uh, can be very helpful for your students. So let's go through as a beginner or as a, a new yoga teacher, someone who is used to just doing a demonstration at the front of the room or on their mat, how do you even start the process? Where do you start to get off your mat? What's the initial, what's the initial way to do that? Because right away it's not, okay, get off your mat and only verbally cue people through poses and start adjusting and doing all this crazy stuff. No, it starts a lot more simple than that. Many of us start with, let's say 80% demonstration on our mat and 20% or 10 to 20% walking around. So you might start there. It's okay if it's not 80% walking around and 20% demo. So there's no percentage that needs to be accomplished for this. When you're starting, just start with a little bit, get comfortable with that, and then continue to move forward. So it's not all or nothing. It's not demonstrate from your mat only or only walk around the room. You can have a little bit of both. And as you get more comfortable, uh, you'll be able to walk around with confidence, knowing that you're able to verbally cue people through the poses, adjust and observe while people are getting a great experience in your class. So the first thing, I have for you is this worksheet. This is gonna help you. I have shared this a few times, but this is the video that goes along with this worksheet that I've created. What this is, is it's got a little yoga uh, class set up with some letters, and then looking at each pose, where would you wanna place yourself as the teacher to demonstrate where your students are able to see you? And where your students are able to see you is where their chest is facing, typically. So shoulders, like where do their shoulders point towards? Not their hips, but their shoulders because the neck and gaze tend to follow where the shoulders are. So for warrior two, if your arms are out, typically you're supposed to look over a, a hand. However, for most of us, we are going to look forward or slightly this way, <laughs> towards the shoulders. So it's gonna be easier to observe someone if they're in front of us, facing towards our chest and shoulders, rather than what you wanna avoid is having people look over their shoulder or behind them. So we never wanna have people have to crank their neck back to see what's going on. So if you're demonst someone's in warrior two here and you're demonstrating behind them, it's very difficult for them to go, okay, what, what's going on? So if someone is a visual learner, they will appreciate the demonstration in front of them. And because yoga classes are dynamic, meaning there's a lot more space here, it's 3D, it's not just on a screen, you have space to work with. And you've got people in different places who are seeing different things. So you wanna make sure that when you demonstrate off of your mat and in different areas, uh, it is with the student's gaze or where they would likely be looking thinking in terms of a beginner. So you can print this off, you can make your own, you can just look at it, but it can be helpful for just thinking about where would I place myself as a teacher to demonstrate so everyone could see me. Okay, let's talk about when, when you, when you get off your mat. So let's start at the beginning, the, the start of class. Your setup is as such. Right? This is a very typical setup. Yes, you can set up differently in a circle and, and different ways, but let's say you're in this very typical setup for yoga practice where you are at the front of the room and your students are facing you. Some of you might be a little bit more lucky and have mirrors. You're able to see a little bit more. And sometimes you don't have mirrors, like I do not have mirrors in the studio space. 
I'm not gonna go through mirroring, I said quote unquote, air quotes here, mirroring, which means mirroring your students. So that's like lift your left hand up and lean to the right. But what I'm doing is the opposite. I'm not gonna do that in this video. I will actually link to another video to help you with mirroring. I did talk about it before on my YouTube channel. So you can check out that video on mirroring to help you out. But that is another layer that you can add on when it comes to uh, demonstration in your yoga classes. You can actually add on multiple many layers, but let's again start at the beginning. In the beginning of your yoga practice, my suggestion is to do the warm up with the students. Warm up meaning your centering practice, so you will be sitting or standing, whatever it is that you choose for your initial pose, do that with them talk through things, you might have notes up here, you might be saying some quotes, some dharma talk, whatever you wanna do, you start with them in the initial pose. If they're in child's pose, of course you're not going to be in child's pose with them. You might demonstrate it real quick, but then come up to do your spiel, whatever you're going to say. We don't make adjustments in the very beginning, we just let people be as they are, so we're not hands-on at all in the beginning, just allowing people to be settled in. So you start at the beginning and then you'll do the warm ups with them, whatever that might be. It might be spinal twists or side to side, or it might be uh, rocking the knees side to side. In the warm up phase two with very gentle warm ups, you can also simply verbally cue without doing so much with them. So if you're on the ground low, let's say on your back, and you're telling people to uh, take their knees side to side, it's not necessarily any, something that someone could see. So talking people through it while you're upright makes for better voice projection. If you are seated or standing, you'll do the warm up with them. You'll add your arms, you'll reach with them together and all as well. So you're gonna stay on your mat for most of that. If you teach vinyasa yoga classes like I do, uh, you'll wanna demonstrate at least one sun salutation. If you do sun salutations in your class, one demonstration, which maybe is a little bit slower the first time to talk about each pose. So with that, again, you'll be at the top of the mat and you can face your students. You can go to the side of your students. Because this is very linear, there's no lefts and rights with a sun salutation A. Uh, you don't necessarily have to be uh, facing a specific way. Um, if you're at the top of the mat, they'll be at the top of the mat. So you'll just do that from your mat though because this is the place where most people can see you at the very front. If you are facing forward, again, chest and shoulders are forward, so that means they're seeing you in the front. So demonstrate a sun salutation A. And there's a phrase then to get off of your mat. After you are, you've demoed some from your mat and you wanna get up, but if you do that, you feel like, and it's happened to me, you feel like your students are going to get up with you. It's happened where I'm in down dog, people are looking at me because they're beginners, and then I don't say anything and I walk my feet forward and get up. And then I have three or four people do that with me, but it's because I didn't say anything. So there's a phrase you can use, and it's something like this. Everyone stay where you're at I'm going to get up off my mat and observe. Or everyone stay in downward facing dog. I'm gonna get up so that I can see what you're doing and how you're doing. Or I'm gonna get up to make adjustments or I'm just, I'm gonna get up and walk around. So you have to actually tell people specifically what you're doing, especially if it's beginners in yoga practice because they're more visual. There's three ways people learn, visually, audibly, so they hear it, visually they see it, audibly they hear it, and kinesthetically they have to feel it, they have to um, get into it and feel what the pose is like. And for most beginners, a visual is the primary learning, especially if they don't know what they're doing. So you have to tell them, and hopefully they have their listening ears on, um, I'm gonna get up off my mat and walk around, demonstrating from different areas of the room. Stay where you're at. <laughs> So you can phrase that however you want, but it is effective. So it's a matter of telling your students what's going on, what you're doing, and what to expect from them and what to expect from you. You might even say that at the very beginning. 
Same with physical adjustments or any kind of adjustments walking around. You may say something like, in this class, don't expect me to be on my mat the whole time. Instead, I will be up walking around quite a bit. You guys stay on your mat and try your best to listen to my verbal cues. You know, something like that. So you'll come up with your own phrasing, whether it's at the very beginning in your introduction or it's when you do get off your mat, you say something like, I'm getting off my mat now, I'm gonna walk around. So talk to your students and tell them what you are doing uh, so they, they know what to expect. There's your phrase. Okay, so then you get off your mat. Again, if you're teaching vinyasa or you're teaching sun salutations, I highly encourage you to learn to cue sun salutations the second, third, fourth time without demonstration. So allow your students to listen, to feel it in their body, and to observe without the visual observation. So tell them that. I'm gonna be leading you through the next three verbally and looking at your form. And here's where you're using just this front line of the room. We, let's say that, if you're, if, especially if you're socially distancing, you're not weaving in and out of students, at least not yet. As a beginner who wants to just get started with dipping your toes on the side, off of your mat, you want to just use this line. So imagine there's a tape line at the front, just in front of your mat. You might come to the corner over here and look from this angle. Then you're going to walk to the other corner of the room and look from this angle. So pacing, and it might just be off the length of your mat, right here to right here. So that you can see different angles of chaturanga, up dog, down dog, and make any verbal corrections that you might want to make. Okay, so it's a simple act of knowing what you verbally have to say. That's why I like sun salutations so much for this, because it's something we repeat over and over, and it happens in the beginning for the most part. So you can do a little bit of pacing or simply just standing. What do you do with your hands? You can hold on to them, they can be behind you. You can sort of tap your fingers. You can just simply walk. Whatever you do, we're avoiding crossed arms and hunching and feeling that confidence to, uh, to make adjustments as needed and to see what's going on. So shoulders back, good posture, your mountain pose position, right? Even as you're walking around. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is when you do get into your sequences of your class, where are you going to demonstrate from? That's where that worksheet comes in handy to get to know. So let's say your first sequence that it has like three or four poses is a warrior sequence. And it starts with uh, stepping from down dog. Okay, let's do it. Stepping from down dog, crescent lunge, Warrior two, and we've got the right leg forward, reverse warrior, and side angle. So you saw the back of me, and we're gonna go right leg forward, but where would your students be? Where would your students' gaze be? If you were going to demonstrate this, where would you be in the room for that? So thinking about where your students are, right foot forward, crescent lunge, warrior two, reverse warrior, side angle. Where's my body facing? Where would my gaze potentially be? It would be this side of the room. From the front, where my right hand is, pointing my toes, to this side, this corner, over there. So that means as a teacher, knowing that my student's right leg is forward, their gaze is likely over in the corner, I will get up over here and demonstrate. Let's say I'm standing, I don't wanna get in down dog, I don't need to, they, don't, they can't see me because they're in down dog. And I would say, lift your right leg, step your right leg forward to low lunge, and then this is where I might demonstrate with them. To low lunge, now rise up, crescent lunge, open to warrior two, right hand forward, left hand back, flip the right palm, and maybe we're staying, I don't know. Whatever it is, um, if you're gonna hold in the pose for a while, you just demonstrate in it, and then you come out. You might need another phrase too. You guys stay in this pose, stay in warrior two, hold this, and you come out and walk around again, Check it out. If you're making physical adjustments, cool. If we're staying away from that, it's more so just observing. You might be speaking at the same time. Okay, reach your right fingertips a little farther. Okay, good job, Sandy. Can you just press into that little toe a little bit more? Great, awesome. So you're making those tiny adjustments, reminding people to breathe. And then you might come back to this side. 
Say, okay, now flip that right palm and reach the hand up. And you're doing it from here. Do you always have to have the same side? So I'm demonstrating over here, my back, I can't see the students. No, it's up to you. If you want to mirror your students, which again, I have a video linked on that, um, you can then do the opposite where you will say your right foot's forward, but really it's your left. You're facing your students, so you're talking to them, and you do a little demonstration, but it's mirroring them. And for that, you might wanna be a little farther back if you can. Um, so mirroring is good even in this instance when you're on the side of, your, uh, side of the room. So not just mirroring the front, but also the sides. So work from right to left side and check it out. Another pose that's good to mirror, that might be good to mirror, and also just demonstrate real quick, is half moon. So if you are getting into half moon, and let's say people are still, they've got their left foot forward this time, so they're gonna open up to this side of the room. I would walk over here before getting into half moon and demonstrate with my right foot forward. So I'm facing students. All right, straighten your, or bend that left knee, rage forward, lift that back leg off the ground, good. And I don't stay in half moon. I'm not gonna stay there. Another phrase you can use with yoga teaching and getting out of the poses because you're just demonstrating is letting them know and reminding yourself that this is not my practice, this is your practice. So I'm not gonna be holding the poses very long. Instead, I'm going to be assisting and helping you to find more depth and to find more in this practice. So even that phrase to help your students understand that I'm not staying in these poses. I will be observing, I'll be getting in and out of them. I'll be showing them to you, but also talking to you to help you to get the most out of it, right? So using phrases like that to remind them that you're helping them, that you're not going to stay in the poses and you're going to be up and walking around. And as you're getting started out, just use this long front side of the room, or if you have people you know, set up with their yoga mats, maybe you're just using the little space, just a little space on the edges of the mat, rights and lefts. And that's how you get more comfortable with working the room. That's the beginner's guide to working the room. And I hope that was helpful for you. If you have not yet downloaded this or looked at this, please do because it can be helpful. You can also add your own poses and your own notes to where you would be and then practice it. A great exercise is to just have a sequence or a short sequence or a series and even set yourself up like this and pretend there are students in class without there actually being students. If you want stuffed animals on your, on your mats, cool. It just gets you used to coming off your mat and then looking around and making sure that you look at each mat, which would be a person in real life, um, before you move on to the next, okay? So that's the start for you. Uh, when we, we'll, we talk about physical adjustments in a different lesson and other tips and things, but this is the beginner's guide to starting to get off of your yoga mat as a new yoga teacher. Good luck.